Hi guys, so today I have a bookshelf tour of all of the bookshelves in the room we're currently doing homeschool in. And I'm also gonna show you guys the bookshelves in my daughter's room. And so most of this are homeschool books, nonfiction, and then our other book collections, which includes like picture books, middle grade fiction, classics. This shelf right here, I've shown it before in my independent reads and read aloud video, I think. So I'm gonna show it again though, in case you didn't watch it or in case you want another view. So I'm gonna go over this whole shelf, which this bottom is all the stuff we're using for homeschool right now. And then the top is like independent reads and yeah, all independent reads. And then this, we have two shelves here. The one on the left is my husband and I's books. I'm gonna show you like one shelf of it, which are like my favorite books. This shelf is mostly all homeschool and then independent reads, middle grade, etc. Yeah, so I'm gonna, so basically I have like one, two, three, and then four, five, like around five bookshelves. And then I'm also gonna show you guys uh, our book cart, which have our library books on it that we have this week. And then the books that we're currently reading right now. And so yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so the first book, um, this is the top row of the Independent Reads. This is Sarah Penny Packer's Packs. Some classics. These are mostly classics. I did a whole video on how I'm integrating more classics into my daughter's Independent Reads. So here's Alice in Wonderland, and then Little House on the Prairie, The Wind in the Willows, Princess and the Goblin, uh, Lord of the Rings. And then the second row, these are all mostly like middle grade fantasy and then this is what my daughter is currently reading right now, The Hobbit. This is her book journal. This is her book log. And then here's some more middle grade fiction. Here's some more middle grade fiction. And continuing in this book, it's so large that it actually doesn't fit on any of our shelves. So I kind of just put it here and you can see the other middle grade fiction on that shelf. Okay. okay, so that was everything on that shelf, and then the bottom of this shelf is pretty much every single thing that I, we're actually pulling from every day for fourth grade homeschool. And so the beginning are read alouds, skunk and badger, This is our main read aloud, A Year Full of Stories. 52 folk tales and legends from around the world, except it has only a few stories per month, of course. So we then we, we read this at the beginning of the month or the days that it says. Um, some days are marked, so like certain holidays or whatever. And then we read these in between. And then more read alouds. A World Full of Dickens Stories. A Stage Full of Shakespeare Stories. Then here's our extra Beast Academy workbooks. Here's our extra jar right now that we're gonna start after we finish the one we're on now. Here's geography. And then here is like our blossom and root section. We're studying the animal kingdom. And then nature anatomy, farm anatomy. This is the thinking tree, endangered species. That's one we just got on our own. It wasn't part of blossom and root. I have a whole Blossom and Root Science video also for all the resources I'm using if you guys want to check out that video. Also, we use this as like a science starter at the beginning before science. We read it. Here's um, Blossom and Root, DK Animal, Animal Atlas, and Amelium. And then here's our Geography and History section, the 50 states, and that's everything we're using right now for Geography. Check out all my past videos too if you want to see flip throughs of a lot of the books I've showed you today because I have a lot of individual videos on different subjects. And then here's Curiosity Chronicles and then Maps. We're using this for Geography and for History by Big Picture Press. And then here's our art and then Language Arts, which we do every day, Monday through Thursday. I have a video on that also everything we use for language arts. Yeah, 
And then here's the math section, which is pretty much everything we're currently using for math. And then this is like what is her nonfiction. She reads this on Fridays and she's gonna do a nonfiction book report at the end of the month. So yeah, so that's everything. We're currently our active books that we're using for fourth grade. And then those were the mostly independent reads. Okay, so this top shelf is everything extra that we're using for fourth grade right now that didn't fit on that white shelf I just showed you guys. So the first thing are just random stuff. And here's a beautiful picture book we read, but it didn't fit in the picture book section, which is the next shelf I'm gonna show you guys. So I just put it here, Hortense in the Shadow. And then here's uh, Geography, National Geographic, a vintage book. And then here we just got some random, this is like all history. These are just extra history books that we're gonna read when we get to that part in history. First, I was using, um, first I was using Blossom and Root for American history, and then I actually changed back to Curiosity Chronicles, which is modern history, I mean, sorry, world history, and it also covers some American history, so we're probably not gonna be using these books as much as I thought, but I plan on studying American history for fifth grade. So. Here I have some horrible histories, and then here I have the If You Live series. Here I have some more Who HQs, Sorry, Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, then here's more history. This is The Middle Passage, beautiful book. We actually did read this book this year. So mostly wordless, and I, it's, I really love it. And then here's Pirates, Magnified, more history books this I plan on possibly using for fifth grade history and then I'm not going to go through all of these but this is our whole QHQ section who was what is all of that and then here's our horrible history section here's our ranger in time which these are more chapter bookish and it's kind of I don't know if you want to call it historical fiction because it's more like mm, I don't know it's based on this dog traveling through history my daughter really liked them. And you can use them in different points of history. You know, this one's like danger in ancient Rome. Okay. And then here's horrible. Here we get into the science now. That's all of the extra history stuff and the stuff I pull from. And then here's science. We have horrible science. Love these. And then we have science comics. Again, those are fun. Those are really quick reads. And I find that they have a lot of information that's really helpful. And then this is our sort of blossom and root section because we're studying animals for fourth grade. And these are all the extra animal books that when we get to a certain section in the curriculum, I kind of just come here and pull some of these. And we're studying zoology bio, bio, slash biology for fourth grade. Extinction, you know, birds, reptiles, amphibians, etc. I love this one. Okay, so that's pretty much the top shelf, which like I said, I, is our extras, extra stuff for fourth grade. Now the second shelf. The second shelf are mostly picture books, vintage books, and I'm going to start here. Okay, so here's our little golden book set, collection, I should say. A lot of these are ones I owned when I was a kid. Some are newer. So yeah. So that's all our little golden books then. Here's Little Women and Green Gables. Here's a vintage copy. And then here's our Shell Silverstein collection. Here are some vintage books, mostly the Bernstein Bears that I had when I was a kid. And some other really nostalgic vintage books that I really love. And then like classics where the wild things are miss nelson is missing stuff like that these are really packed right here and just random books that didn't fit anywhere else here's the picture book biography well sort of yeah on a beam of light and then my name is georgia i really like picture book biographies for units and then here's a non-fiction book 365 words everyone should know and then here we have more picture books and here I have some newer picture books that we actually read for fourth grade. 
Here is Sometimes I Feel, love that book. This is probably my favorite current picture book that I've found in the past couple years. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie McAtee. It's beautiful. Here's a little print. Another classic. We love John Classen. Another beautiful book. Okay, so then the rest, I have some vintage picture books here. And then now the third row. So these are Harry Potter series, of course. And this is some classics. Some of these she hasn't, my daughter hasn't read yet, but I wanted to read and I've been working on building our classics. I have a video on that also, if I didn't mention it, I'll, I'll link it, adding more classics to our reading. So Swiss Family Robinson, Huckleberry Finn, Robinson Crusoe, To Kill a Mockingbird, Robin Hood, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, Sherlock Holmes. And then here we have the rest, all the way to the left is pretty much all middle grade fiction. And I love these two books. My daughter read them, and then I read them, The Wild Robot series by Peter Brown. Really, these are two of my favorite books, middle grade books I've ever read. This is our Lauren Wilk section. She's one of my favorite middle grade authors. And this is probably my favorite book by her, Beyond the Bright Sea. And then we have the Incorrigible Children set series. I have, an, I have a video on this whole series also. I'll link that one, that video. This is Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. I love this series. My daughter is currently reading book two. That's why it's not here. And yeah, okay. And then here's our Sarah Penny, Sarah Penny Packer section. I have packs I showed you guys earlier on that other shelf that I pulled because my daughter actually never read these two by, of packs, but I read them first. And now she's reading the first one. This is the second one. I Another one of my favorite books I've ever read, which is packs. And so... Now we have the Kate DiCamillo section. Kate DiCamillo is my favorite, favorite, favorite middle grade kids book. Middle grade and I don't know if they're all considered middle grade, but kids book author, um, Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane and The Tale of Despero, probably my top favorite. And then I just love all of her work. These three are really good too, especially like Louisiana's Way Home. I could just talk about her books forever. I always recommend them to people. I always buy them as gifts. And she's so great. Her writing is so good. Anyway, so that's our whole KD Camillo section. And so, yeah, so this pretty much sums up all of the third shelf, which is, like I said, mostly middle grade. And now I'm going to do the bottom shelf. So, yeah, so here are our dinosaur section of all the dinosaur books. And then we have a couple tree books right here, DK. And this is trees. Here's the DK trees, magic and mystery of trees. And then here is the space section. We have us born and National Geographic. And then I have this one, which is my favorite from the unit, which is a cat's guide to the night sky. And then I have how to be a space explorer by Lonely Planet Kids. Okay, and then here's our Earth, Science, and Rocks books. Here's Super Earth by DK, The Big Earth Book by Lonely Planet Kids, Destination Planet Earth by Wide Eyed. And then I love this book, The Rocking, Rocking Book of Rocks, again by Wide Eyed. The Street, the Street Beneath Your Feet, which is like archaeology or science-ish and then I have we have a few human body books here is Illuminatomy and then he, pop up human body and then here is the infographics also by Big Picture Press and then this one's really pretty Illuminatomy where you can look with the different colors and then we have a couple bug books Yuval Zomer the big book of bugs um, DK the book of brilliant bugs That one's really fun. I really like this book. And then the B book. And then here's our two ocean books. DK, Smithsonian Ocean, and Sharks. And then here's just general science. This one's one of my favorites. Seeing science. And then this one's nice too. Women in science. And then, let's see what else do I really like. I really love this one, The Life Cycles by DK. 
I really love these S4 and lift the flap. This is for your table. This one's really pretty. This one's also by DK. It's um, Nature's Treasures. This one's just kind of a fun book to just kind of look in randomly. Bunch of pretty nature things. Here's our art section. I'm not going to take all these books out. I have a video on art also if you want to check that out. And I'll show flip throughs of pretty much everything I believe that's shown here. So these are all of our art books. And then here is our language art section, which this is Ordinary Parents Guide to Teach and Read. And that's how I taught my daughter to read. But this book, along with sight words and, you know, reading like short, short little board books and stuff. The Dictionary of Difficult Words by Francis Lincoln, publisher. And then Us Born, another lift the flap, grammar and punctuation. And then we have a poetry book right here by DK of a lot of DK books. And then another, this one's Lonely Planet Kids, Gods, Goddesses, and Heroes. And then a mythology and a monsterology book. So it's like mythology. And then the rest are like kind of mixed genres. And then history and geography. And then this is another really fun book, The Incredible Cabinet of Wonders, with all these cool, interesting flaps, little doors by Lonely Planet Kids. And then let's see, more Lonely Planet Kids. Here's a history, build your own history, history museum. My daughter really enjoyed this one. You build these little things. We did this when we studied ancient history. And then here's another Lonely Planet Kids. This is my world. I think this is be, this is really nice for a geography. Studying Geography, A Child Through Time, another really good book for studying history. You could almost make a curriculum after these two books on their own. A Spines, I think, that's what I did. A Child Through Time. And then here's the Us Born Timelines of World History, and then Historium by the Welcome to the Museum series. Here is A Street Through Time by DK. And then we have some more history books, the story of people, ancient Greeks, Aztec empire. And then a hundred people, a hundred inventions by DK. And then here's another lonely planet book. This is a city's book. Here is another one of my favorites. I don't know if it's even in print anymore, but it's like the seven continents of the world. It's a lift the flap book. Um, I think it's by like an Australian publisher that I had never heard of, but it's really fun. We use this for geography. Yeah. And then, okay, so that's pretty much everything that is on our bottom shelf in our homeschool area. And I also wanna say that if you've seen my videos before, watched a lot of my videos before and you see some books that you don't see, it's because if we don't absolutely feel like we're gonna reread a book, or if we got a lot of valuable information out of it, or if it wasn't for us, then I donate it or I sell it back to like used bookstores or um, et cetera, et cetera. So we kind of have a philosophy where we only keep books that we really think we're gonna use in the future or a value or they bring us joy, the Marie Kondo thing. <laughs> so I'm the type of person that we go through books constantly. Like, do we wanna donate this? Do we wanna sell it? You know, do we wanna keep it? And we're all, we do this especially at the beginning and end of every school year. And also I do it in my personal library and things like that. Like, cause I don't have the space to have just a million books like I'd want kind of, but um, yeah. So I'm a very, I'm always reorganizing and, and reevaluating what I should keep. Okay, so this is a second shelf and I'm not gonna go over this whole shelf because it's like my husband and I's books or whatever, but I'm gonna show you really quick. These are all like my really like favorite, favorite, favorite books um, of all time. And I'm constantly re-editing. I only, I only keep books that I know I want to reread or that I absolutely love. Jane Austen, the Bronte Collection, Rebecca, Language of Flowers by Oleander, The Alchemist, Secret History. This is my Donna Tartt section. And this is my Edward Gorey section. I love Edward Gorey's illustrations. And here's my little old paperback classics, mostly from college. I want to reread. Here's some more classics. Here's my, um, here's my nonfiction section. Here's my poetry section. And then here's, here's another vintage that probably should go here. These are my older vintage paperbacks that I need to reread. And then here's my Margaret At Atwood section. She was probably the first author I found in my twenties that I really 
fell in love with a lot of her work and I wanted to read it all. And I actually still haven't even read this one. I need to put it on my book cart. But yeah, so that's, and then my favorite book of all time is Jane Eyre by, by Jane Eyre by Shelley Bronte. And then my second favorite book of all time is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So that's just one shelf I'm gonna show you guys. Now I'm gonna take you guys to my daughter's room. Okay, so this shelf right here is my daughter's bookshelf in her room. So her room is very messy right now. We're actually reorganizing her room. We plan on building her some more bookshelves and better storage. So I'm not gonna show you guys her whole room because it's kind of a work in progress. But right now I'm just gonna show you two of her bookshelves. Well, two, this is one book case I'm gonna show you guys and then I'm gonna show you this other two bookshelves that she has above her desk. There's my dog, Sully. So this bookshelf, I just kind of, um, hi Sully, <laughs> there's my dog, Sully. I just kind of let her organize however she wanted. And so these are just like random books. Some are nonfiction, some are picture books, some are middle grade. So yeah, so we got like the Unicorn Rescue Society. We have like DK Dinosaur. We have Eloise, you know, the Book of Mistakes, which I love that picture book. We have some Margaret Wise Brown, The Dead Bird, Bernstein Bears. We have more nonfiction, a lot of dinosaur books. She wanted to be a paleontologist for a few years. So we have a lot of dinosaur books. Now she wants to be a biologist or an architect. So this is a really beautiful dinosaur pop-up book. These are some books that we have in French. And then here are some mostly board books from when she was younger, but she just very nostalgic about them so she keeps them on her shelf. And then the bottom shelf, again, is very mixed. I have like, she has like Dr. Seuss, Lauren Child, you know, classic. And then here we got some just nonfiction. And then this is like a wordless picture book pool, really beautiful book. Um, the Eye of the Pharaoh, it's a pop-up book. The Wonderful, love this picture with the Wonderful, it's fluffy little squishy. And then her, there's her Where's Waldo set. It's just a random nonfiction. I love these Professor Astrocat books. Like these are, this was probably my favorite book from the space unit. We use this in our space unit. I love these. To me, they have the perfect amount of information in them for a unit. That was my favorite one. And then here we have this collection, Little People, Big Dreams. And then here's like all middle grade fiction, some graphic novels, um, Shannon Hill. And then we have Catherine, no, Kate, Kate O'Hearn. And then Arusha, Maya and the Rising Dark. These are all her favorites. And then let me show you guys real quick. So you can see if I pop up on the top of her bookshelf, these books, Keeper of the Lost Cities, that's her second favorite series after Harry Potter. And these, we don't even have space for on the shelf I just showed you guys and on the shelf I'm about to show you guys. So that's part of the reason why we're redoing her whole room because she needs more space for books. Even donating books, reselling books, we still have so many books because we read a lot. Uh, yeah, so that was the rest of the books that was on that bookcase and on top of it. And this is the top shelf, top section of her desk. I'm not gonna show the rest of it because she has some personal items and it's kind of cluttered. Um, like I said, we're reorganizing her room, but I'm just gonna show you guys the books. We're actually thinking of donating this whole desk or selling it, this set, and then maybe, and just probably just doing like a wall to wall bookshelf on the wall you see right here and that way she'll have way more space and then my husband's going to do a built-in desk okay so the top is pretty much all of her favorite like middle grade i can't even reach these without a chair you guys so i'm just going to kind of film across so if you can see these are all of like her favorites like middle grade fiction that she's read in the past like few years there's like the magic treehouse series there's ada lace science series there's Theodosa series, and then here's like some classics um, by E.B. White, and then some Jane Eyre board books, Matilda, Pippi Longstocking, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Greek Heroes, Harry the Spy, The Pinterwicks. Okay, and then this little two shelves, sorry, I'm bumping into Legos. <laughs> These two shelves, so the top is just books that she's recently finished 
and that's just where it where she's keeping them for now she loves Stuart Gibbs and these are like mixed up different series he has like a lot of different series so these are like different series that he has and then this is um, Pages and Co and then Artemis Fowl and then Wings of Fire she loves Wings of Fire we're actually finishing these via the library for space and for money I think they have like so many like I don't know but she's on like book nine or ten right now and we I only bought her like one through five I believe and so yeah but anyway she loves those and this section is her next reads so these are the ones that she's in the process of reading next right now she's currently reading Argon Aragon by Christopher Poloni and she's reading another book I don't have it in here but anyway so these are the ones she's going to work on next and so yeah so here they are more of us do her give second Artemis Fowl. This is the second Incorrigible Children. Here's some other books. This is like either second or third in the Wildwood Chronicles. So yeah, so that's all the books in her room. And I have one more thing to show you guys, which is our book So this cart. is our book cart. And what we've been doing is putting all of our library books on the top. And then the second shelf is what I'm currently reading at the moment. My daughter, as you saw in that previous video, she pretty much keeps her... Uh, to be tbr you know to be read books in on her desk and then this bottom shelf i just have like my art supplies and then we also have a homeschool cart i'm not showing that in this video but we have two carts and this is the book cart so on the top shelf is pretty much everything i checked out from the library this week these are all the books that i'm gonna try i have no idea if i'll like them or if i can recommend them because yeah just giving them all a try this is a wolf called wonder middle grade fiction i actually started i actually like it so far so i'm gonna try it my daughter has so many books right now that she's reading that she didn't really pick out anything from the library because they didn't have wings of fire which she wanted we're waiting on that but then i got i still i read middle grade fiction you probably noticed <laughs> this is a true confession sorry confessions of charlotte doyle this one's like i think historical fiction yeah so i'm gonna try that one a psalm for the wild built by becky chambers granted okay and so the this one is for adults the other two are middle grade i think this was middle grade granted i believe it's middle grade yeah a boy his dog at the end of the world i, I believe this is also for adults fates and furies by lauren groff that's for also for adults and then this one i know i'm gonna probably pronounce wrong so i'm just gonna spell it it's p-a-c-h-i-n-k-o Pachinko, maybe, by Min Jing Li. So that one, again, I'm going to try. And then the second shelf is Summer Library Books and Summer Books I Own. This is Great Expectations, which I'm still slowly working on by Charles Dickens. These two are from the library, from the Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy, and then A Gentleman in Moscow. And then this one's my daughter's book that she, did, she wasn't really into, but I want to try it. The Evolution of Capernia Tate, so I'm giving it a try. And then, so I'm getting mixed up here. Okay, and then this is a Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. This is a reread for me. I, I did a whole video on this if you're interested. It's a really beautiful book. Um, kind of like a play on words, kind of poetry-ish. Really interesting. And this one is a poem for every day of the year. This one was supposed to be for homeschool, but then my daughter really wasn't interested in poetry that much, and I didn't want to push it on her because we were already doing the read aloud, so I just decided to read it on my own. It's, it is literally a poem for every day of the year, and I'm enjoying it. And then these are just like my book book journals and logs, and then that's about it. These are just where I keep my extra book things, like highlighters and extra bookmarks. Same thing. I keep extra bookmarks. It doesn't have candy. It has bookmarks. And then here's my little tabs. Yeah. So, okay, you guys, that's like pretty much every single book in our house right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And my normal videos, I usually do flip these, but this one has too many. So, yeah. So, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone who subscribes and watches and likes my videos. Thanks so much. Bye.